Hey, let's talk about operators and see. So this is another beginner C video. At this point, you've probably seen a couple of the different operators that C has to offer. If you haven't, if you are truly brand new, you've never seen a line of C before, and you're just starting from scratch, you should go back and watch a few of my other beginner videos to get you up to speed. They'll get you to where this video will make more sense. For the rest of you, let's talk about operators. So what's an operator? An operator is basically just the operations, mathematical or otherwise, that allow us to modify or work on data in a programming language. And C has a bunch of different operators that you can use. So today I just wanna look at them so that you know what's available and you know how to use them. Okay, so first on the list are your arithmetic operators. So these ones are pretty obvious. They're your basic math operators, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. Super useful, you've probably seen them. These probably comes as no surprise. You might be less familiar with the modulus operator, which... And the modulus operator gives you the remainder after a division. So 4 mod 2 equals 0, and 7 mod 2 equals 1. And the modulus operator is super handy for things like telling if a number is even or odd, or checking to see if a number is evenly divisible by another number. C also gives us increment and decrement operations. Now these can be a little weird, and I'm going to explain why. So if I have an int that's value is 10, and I increment it like this, then its value is now going to be 11. So that's pretty straightforward. But there are some weird things that you might not suspect about the increment and decrement operators. Specifically, what if I write something like this? In this case, x is going to be incremented. But what is y going to be? y will actually receive the value that x used to be. When I write x++, it increments the value of x, but evaluates to the old value. Now let's say I wanted to increment the value of x and read its new value. Well, in that case, I would put the increment operator before the x. And the decrement operator works exactly the same way. I know it's a little weird. It's okay. Just play around with it. It'll make sense. So next we have our comparison operators. So these are useful in comparing two expressions or two variables or in representing logical expressions. So the simplest of these is the equivalence operator. Now for this one, pay attention. Because in C and a lot of other programming languages, one equal sign means assignment. It means I want one variable to get the value of another variable. But if I put two equal signs, that's testing to see if these two variables are equivalent. And of course, confusing these operators can cause some confusing and really strange results in your programs. So we can test to see if two variables or expressions are equivalent. We can also test to see if they are not equivalent by putting an exclamation point equals. And we also have tests for greater than and less than and greater than equals and less than or equals. Now, each one of these comparisons is going to evaluate to a value of true or false. And we can combine multiple comparisons, multiple trues and falses, to create logical statements using the AND operator, the OR operator, and the NOT operator. So this expression, for example, will be true if x is greater than y, and either a is greater than b or a is greater than c. And adding an exclamation point in front will negate the statement, turning true to false and false to true. So that's straightforward enough. The next set of operators I want to look at are the bitwise operators. So for beginning programmers, these may seem less familiar. And to understand them, we really need to look into how computers represent numbers. An integer variable in C is a number, and the computer stores it in binary. My program may assign it to be 5, but internally it's stored as the binary 101. OK, so we call each 1 or 0 a bit, and the bitwise operators operate on the individual bits of a number. For example, if I take the bitwise AND of 9 and 5, it's going to go through each bit in each of those numbers, and if both bits are 1s, it's going to produce a 1, and produce a 0 otherwise. So the end result is going to be 1. The bitwise OR of 9 and 5 is going to be 1101 or 13. And this is doing the same thing as the AND, except it's checking to see if either of the bits are 1s, rather than are both the bits 1. Another bitwise operator is the exclusive OR, or XOR, and it produces a 1 if exactly one of the bits is 1. So if you have 1, 0, or 0, 1, you're going to get a 1. But if both or none of the bits are 1, it's going to be a 0. So the exclusive OR of 9 and 5 is going to be 1100 0, 0, or 12. And the bitwise NOT or complement operator, all it does is it goes through a number and turns 1s to zeros and zeros to 1s. So pretty simple. And then we have the shift operators. The shift right operator shifts the bits to the right. The shift left operator shifts the bits to the left. So right shifting 9 by 2 is going to shift the number 2 bits to the right. You're going to lose those 2 bits and the result is going to be 2. Another way to think about the shift operators is that a right shift by 1 bit is like dividing by 2. And a left shift by 1 bit is like multiplying by 2. 
And that's probably about as much talk about operators as I can handle for today. I'm sure I'm missing a few, but I'm out of time. So I hope that's a useful overview for the beginning programmers out there. Who knows, maybe even the more experienced ones learn something. But either way, I hope it's useful. I hope it helps you along your way to becoming a better programmer. And until next time, I'll see you later. Thank you.